Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to look at the global stories that has made it to the front pages of our national dailies. And joining us this morning to review the papers is Gide Jensen, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you and to have you back on this program. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's good to be back. Thank you. All right, so let's get straight into the papers. We'll begin with the business NG this morning, and this leads with reps reject proposal for single-term six-year tenure. So um, a few months ago, we saw this whereby um, there was a proposal that instead of having to do four years um, twice, it should be collapsed to six years, and it just means that everyone needs to get into office, do what they have to do, um, and it would probably help with, with the development um, of whatever state, whatever um, local government, um, and the country as a whole, instead of most times people going for the first term and they feel they need to um, gather all of the monies that they use for election, and then by second term, they might now be able to do the work. But now we've seen that the reps have actually rejected um, this proposal of the single six-year tenure. I want to get your take on this. Do you think it's a good thing or not so great? Because I'm sure with both of them, they obviously have their pros and cons. They have the ups and downs. But here we are. We might just have to stick with um, two, four terms. I want to get your take on this one. Well, I think this will not be the last time it will be presented because this was just one of the priorities for this 10th assembly. Mm. Uh, um, the first major bill they focused on was on this uh, yeah. tenor elongation of tenor rotational uh, presidency, uh, rotational offices across um, the six geopolitical zones, yeah. across the political zones in the state, and for the chairman to at the local government level. So, and um, I'm sure if this was done last year, it would have passed. I think those that mooted this idea, they've lost a lot of their political capital. And as a result of that, they couldn't muster enough, enough, enough courage for it to have gotten to the level that was was presented in the floor. It has passed first reading, second reading, and the rest of it. For it to fail now, must have known that there are a lot of factors that has come into play and a lot of influences beyond the political class that must have influenced the jettison of this um, six-year single single tenor. I think the problem we have is not. It's not about the tenor, whether it's four years, whether it's six years, mm -hmm. whether it's eight years. It's just about those that we have elected to do what they are supposed to do and focus on on the job on the ground and ensure that they, deal, they deliver on their promises for the citizenry and they are not working for special interests or their personal interests. So it's, it's, it's a welcome development that this particular bill, um, this particular, uh, bill was, 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 was killed. At, at this junction, because this will be major distraction. What becomes the implementation? If it is passed, then it means that the president can seek re-election. Governors that are on second term can seek re-election. <clears throat> or the internal allocation for those, <clears throat> it will be messy. And I, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that um, this did not see the light of the day. This should not be the focus of the National Assembly. The focus of the National Assembly should be on how to, to ameliorate the hardship of Nigerians to deal with the digit inflation that we have, to deal with the high cost of um, food prices across the length and breadth of the country to deal with the energy crisis, come up with solution with the energy crisis and the rest of it, and not this. Um, the national grid keep, coll keep collapsing day in, day out. And then they, they are not focusing on that. They are focusing on, on, on what will benefit the political class. So mm -hmm. this one is good regards to battle. Yeah. I'm so glad it failed. Mm. So, I mean, I, I love the fact that, you know, you said at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter on whatever it is, either a single term or is, you know, two, four, um, four years, that's a, a, a double term. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's about, you know, the people that go in there. And, you know, this just even goes to a lot of people that were calling for the military takeover, a lot of people that were talk I'm talking about a parliamentary system of government. So at the end of the day, it's about the people who are there. And if they're willing, if they have the political will to do the work, not just saying, oh, this, if it's a single term, that would just change everything, that would just make everything work better. Not necessarily. Um, it just depends on the people who are elected as our leaders. So another story here um, says, confusion over state police deepens as next sets deadline for reports. So there's been the whole debate um, over state police, and a lot of people have said uh, state police would help better 
because these people know the local terrains, they know the state better, instead of having to get um, people from the center, from the federal level, come in into a new terrain that they're not really sure about, and the state police would just help. And we've seen cases of um, others like Amote now, who is doing so well when it comes to like the southwestern part of Nigeria. But now there's been a confusion. There's now a deadline by the National Economic Council anyway, but I want to get your take on state police as a whole. And um, if you think at this point, this is what we need right now. Well, if you can't achieve state police as a result of the high state politics that is involved in it, mm. at least you can regionalize the existing police structure. We can domesticate the existing police structure. What do I mean by that? You can post people, at least 60% of the police force should come from the state of their origin. Mm. Should come from their should come from, from their state of origin, should come from their from 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 from, from their local government area, should come from their communities. You can still do that with posting. Mm. That is achievable. Yeah. If you want to do that, if you really want to achieve that, you can achieve that by ensuring that the posting and the assignment of of officers is done on that basis. So you could still do a 60-40 arrangement. Mm. Whereby you have 60 locals mm. and 40 percent um, um, outside uh, that are from that are not from within that community or from that state. Mm. You achieve better goal. After all, we put police based on on the basis of local government, equality of the local government. You that's what you used to recruit, recruit people into the police, either at the lowest scale or at the officer officer scale. You use it on on equality basis. So you can achieve you can achieve that. And then if you, if you look at that in that regard. If you look at even that approach, Lagos State is your chain. Lagos has 20, 20 local government. Kano has 44 local government. Um, or your state has 32 local, 30 local government. Or has 30. Now look at the amount of policing that Lagos require compared to some of these states we are making mention of. So even in the process of recruitment, they've been tortured because it is done on the basis of no government, no government, no government, no government structure. So there is, we can still reorganize and reject the existing system. You don't have to throw away the existing system. If you can still make it work, what are the suggestions that people have made? At least that, okay, if, if, if changing it through the instrumentality of constitutional review will take a longer time, you can change it through administrative, through policy, policy instrument that can bring about an administrative reorganization of the existing, of the existing system. So that's, that's my take. You have local governments, police in, in, in area G, in area F, there are people that grew up in those areas, and 60% of them, they know the crime spot, and they can deal with the issue of the crime. That's... I Yes, I think that is so apt. That is so on brand because one of the issues that people had raised was um, if we have state police, it can be run by the governor or the people who are there because they know that they can have control or have powers over these people. But if there is that, um, you know, quota where you know that, okay, 60% or even 70% are the locals and we have some other people from outside, um, and there is a mix. I think that would really work and it would work because you know, even if there's going to be some level of corruption or something, because there, there is a mix together, it's just better. So I, I totally agree with you. And I think that's something um, they should look into. If they're not going to go ahead with the state police, this is something you can do just to rejig the system, reshuffle it, and ensure that you're having benefits from both sides. All right, moving over to another story. This says 1.7 trillion Naira loan. NAS, that's the National Assembly now, an accomplice as Nigeria sinks into debt. And that is according to former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. On The Guardian, it also says Atiku LCCI faults Tinubu 1.7 trillion naira fresh loan amid lawmakers' swift approval. I want to get your take on this because this is a serious allegation. And of course, we are going into debt. Every single day, we're plunging into debt. We keep borrowing. We don't know what we're using the monies for because we're not really seeing any development or something tangible in our society, in our country. But yet, you're hearing our debt profile increase um, tremendously. And now, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is already accusing the National Assembly of being an accomplice. I want to get your take on this one. 
Well, um, it's, it's very clear. We don't, you said it, you know, the series of loans that was taken by the prior administration, mm -hmm. that at the end of the year, um, there was nothing to show for it. Yeah. The one that was even expended on, on, on infrastructure, specifically railway, um, that we collected loan to build railway to another to another country, and we didn't build within Nigeria. So Nigeria was last, other countries were first. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people have felt that there will be a paradigm shift with the 10th assembly. There will not be a rubber stamp assembly like Lawan assembly. But mm -hmm. the reverse is the case. Every time the president brings an application for loan, it's strictly approved. Um, like no no form of debate and mm. evaluating what these loans are meant for, and we see that in the last um, one year of this administration, more than in the last twenty months of this administration, series of loans have been have, have, have been collected. And the question you ask is, what have they expended? If you are collecting the loan, at least there should be a project that is tied to it, and there should be some measure of transparency that this loan is being collected for this purpose, for this purpose, for this purpose, and then we use it. We need for that for that purpose. We just see that they appear before the National Assembly, they put the application for this loan and they get this loan. And the other questions Nigeria and action is that okay, fine, you are collecting this loan, but you remove education tariff, you increase electricity tariff, mm. you remove you remove subsidy, and you increase different areas in generating revenue. We are proposing to even increase our taxes. If you are making more money. Then why are you collecting loan? Because the revenue base of the government has been increased by as a result of the removal of various subsidies and various forms of, of reliefs, tax reliefs which you give to your citizens. Mm -hmm. Then there should be a difference in terms of your performance. There should be a difference in terms of your deliverables of democracy. But now there's no corresponding um, relationship between the the, the, the the sacrifices Nigerians have paid with what the government is delivering as deliverables of democracy and government also going out to borrow to borrow loans because they said what the promise of this present administration was that they were not going to go through the route of the last administration but unfortunately it is the same it is the same approach they've adopted and it's very simple Ziggler said for you to continue to do the same thing the same manner and expect to get a different result he mm. said it's the beginning of insanity you can't continue to continue to borrow and borrow and borrow and we have nothing to show for it. We don't even know where this money are going to. Are this money going to the proper actual project which they are borrowed for? Are this money being borrowed for capital project? Or are they being borrowed for the correct expenditure? So all of this we don't know. We just go to the National Assembly, it's approved, and everything is done mm -hmm. in secrecy, and we don't know anything anything about it. At the end of the day, it is you and I that will bear the brunt of this loan, and our bond children that will come and pay the interest yeah. and the capitals of this loan. Well, I mean, I cannot even agree with you more. We keep borrowing, we're not using any, we can't even see anything that is being used for. And I love the fact that you talked about the electricity tariff that has gone up. So many things have been increased, obviously. Fuel subsidy is gone. Um, and when we're borrowing, we need to be sure that there are projects. That's the reason why you're even borrowing in the first place. Um, and if we even move over to electricity, we've seen the national grid collapse so many times. In fact, I think twice in 24 hours. Um, every other week, I think it's even maybe in the past two weeks that we've had a, a little bit of breathing space when it comes to national grid collapse. Um, and now on the Daily Trust, it says, grid collapse, NEC raises committee on national electrification. On the punch, it says serial grid collapse NEC panel to boost power generation in states. So I want to get your take because they even tell you that these equipments that are being used in the power sector, they are obsolete. That's the reason why the grid is collapsing so much. And we're a nation of over 200 million people who are only producing about four to 5,000 megawatts, you know, and... Our counterpart, that is South Africa, a population of, I think, less than 60 million people are producing about 70,000 megawatts. That is a huge disparity um, because we don't even have enough power to sustain the economy for the people. And obviously, electricity is one of the bloodlines of our nation. So if, we're, if we continue to see this grid collapse, 
I don't know what's going to happen because, of course, the economy is not going to thrive. But with the fact that the um, NEC right now is raising a committee for national electrification and trying to ensure that, you know, states can, you know, just be, be basically generate their own power. What do you think? Is that just the way to go? Raising a committee, what next? How do we ensure that we're going to have stable um, and sustainable power in Nigeria? If you want to waste people time, call for a meeting. Mm. If you don't want to get anything done, set up a committee. Mm. And how many committees that have been set up to address the issue of power? It's just basic, simple. In, let you invest in this particular sector. Government needs to divest in this particular sector. Government needs to take their three value chains. You have the, gener uh, the generating chain. You have the, you have the transmission chain. Yeah. And then you even have, you have the distribution chain. Mm. The distribution chain is the one that we have completely privatized. Mm. The generating and transmission chain is still there, is still in government control. Now, the money that we made in 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 in, in divesting government investment in the distribution chain, what did they use it to? They, they, didn't, they didn't use it. We still we are still using the transmission um, infrastructure of 1940 that was that was that was installed in 1948. 1948 to date is how many years ago? So it's it's left for government to look at look let's let's be bold let's be radical let's do what we do in the telecom sector let's take our hand completely out of generation let's take our hand completely out of transmission and let the private sector come in let let them participate actively in this particular sector and let's have that kind of leverage that the telecom sector enjoyed you know I was talking to a friend yesterday and we were talking about telephone and the rest of it and he was talking about those days that we used to have coin. You know, it's the point <laughs> yes, and slot it in. And then you look, right, I remember and that. Slot it, and then you roll, and then and then and then you make your call. And, yes. Uh, uh, and if you if you tell the children, if you tell the Gen Zs about that experience, you wonder <laughs> how would you go and keep, they cannot keep relate. Up? How would you go? And, uh, <laughs> how you go and keep key up in a poly, in, in in a phone, phone book to make yes, a call? Yes, yes. have long long keys to make to make to make calls. They won't yeah. believe. They can't relate with it. Mm. But just one policy change. Yes. Change that particular, and that's the radical changes that we that require we yeah. in this in this particular in this particular sector. Even if we do, even if we generate, if we generate seventy thousand megawatts, yeah. the, the transmission infrastructure you have, we collapse. They don't have the, the reason why you have the grid collapse is that the transmission infrastructure do not have the capacity to hold to, to convey yes. this, and you, and you can't store electricity. You can't store it. You mm. distribute it. What is it generated? It is transmitted, and, and what is transmitted, you distribute and distribute. You use so the transmission capacity does not even have the capacity to 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 convey to transport. It's yeah. like having a car. The transmission chain is like having a car mm. to move your goods and services from one from, from the from farm A to B to the, mm. app, to, to, to the to the market, and now the vehicle. The vehicle is wicked, it's old. It mm -hmm. cannot move your goods. Your goods, I the moment you try to load it, it, it the, the vehicle will break down. And what happened to your goods? Your goods will get rotten. It will not get to the final consumers that actually need. So it's basic. It does not require rocket science. It does not require any, any committee or what have you. Mm -hmm. It's just for them to do what to do the need for. Thank you so much. I, I, I totally agree with you. We need more investment in that sector. And I like the fact that you, you linked it to the telecom sector, whereby a policy change um, just ens ensured that we can now make phone calls at the comfort of our homes. We do not have to queue in a phone booth or somewhere else. But now we can just even pay per second. And that is great. And that's what we expect with the electricity sector as well. Maybe privatize the whole thing, invest in it, just to ensure that we have stable power in Nigeria. Other countries have that. I don't know why we cannot have it or why we cannot solve this, this problem that just is raising its ugly head every single time. But hopefully something will be done when it comes to our electricity sector and when it comes to our economy as a whole. Um, Jide, we want to say thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our show and just reviewing the papers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abu wonderful weekend you too sir thank you 
All right, we've been speaking with Jide Jensen, he's a public affairs analyst, and we've just been taking the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be discussing the Labour Party, while chieftains advocate for age limits for public office holders. Please stay with us.